So this morning we talked on, on the bread of life, which was fun. Foundation of everything in Christianity that we have in God is based off the first one. Now, we, now because we have that firm foundation, now we can move on to I'm the light of the world. And I love this one because, man, this is so deep and so rich that's not even funny. I, I just find this one to be so deep. It doesn't, it doesn't seem like it. I'm the light of the world. Who cares, you know? It sounds so cliche, but man, it is absolutely rich and impactful. And so, Jesus, I am the light of the world. So let's take it back. Let's go back. Because you know what? God has something hidden for us. So amazing about why he says, I'm the light of the world, right? So let's find Jesus. Old Testament is a perfect place to go. So we are, you know what? We start at the beginning. We start in Genesis. Let's go to Genesis 1. In okay. Genesis 1, it says, In the beginning God created the heavens and the earth. And the earth was well formed in an empty place, and darkness was upon the face of a very great deep. The Spirit of God was moving over the face of the waters. And God said, Let there be light. And light was. There was light, right? Sounds so great, you know. Let there be light. And that's what we say. But in Hebrew, it's spoken differently. It's actually referred to this. Elohim said, Light. B. And light was. And then light is not lowercase. It's uppercase. And it says, you be the center. And you know what? In this point on, all creation was made. All creation stemmed from this point. When light was the center, everything came forth. Right? So I think it was interesting, especially he says Elohim which means the Father, Son, and the Holy Spirit. Love that. The three-part God was involved in all of this, right? So, I want you to remember this. Remember that in Genesis 1. He said, light be. Because you know what? God has a way of revealing his own stuff, his own creation, and his own book, right? He loves to take it. You know, we have we got the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit is great, but he, the Holy Spirit will bring it out for us. We just find that God already wrote it out. So, if we go to John 1, it says, in the beginning, before all time, the word that all time was the word. And the word was with God. And the word was God Himself. So we said, yep, God is the word, right? He was present originally with God, and all things were made, came to existence through him. Notice that through him. And without him was not even one thing made that was coming to being. So everything in creation was made through God. Through God, right? In him was life, and the life was the light of men. <laughs> wow. Ho, 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 ho. This light that came forth started all creation. That, 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 that blow, it will blow your mind when you start to really realize that. God said, light be, and all creation was formed. Mm. Keep going. And the light shines on in the darkness. For the darkness has never overpowered it. Put, put it, at it out of all out, or observed it, or appropriated it. It is unreceptive to it. I want you to take that down. Now, if I, if I turn all the lights on this room, it's going to be dark, right? And if I lit a match, it would light the room up. The darkness runs away from the light. The light overcomes dark. Darkness cannot overcome light. That's what he's saying here. But this is so much deeper because who is the light? There came a man sent from God. And whose name was John? Grace. John means God's grace. This man came to the witness that he may testify of the light. Huh? What did John do in the, in the wilderness? What did, what did he do in the Joy River? He said, Behold, here comes the Lamb of God who takes away the, the sin of the world. And who was that? Jesus. Jesus. He came to testify of Jesus. Grace testifies of Jesus. Ooh. The light. The light. God has a reason why he keeps calling it light. That all men might believe in it, adhere to it, trust and repine through him. And there it was, the true light. Not this little light, you see. And you flip on your flashlight or what. True light was then coming into the world, the genuine, perfect, steadfast light that illuminates every person. Woo! That's light. 
every person, that means this person, this means everything. Every person who ever from the creation to the end eliminates them all. That's powerful. And he came to the world and though the world was made through him, the world did not recognize him. Mm. They didn't even see him. And we, you'll, you'll see why. You'll see why. Because you know what? There's one thing about light, about this light, that people in darkness are scared of it. They're scared to see it. They're scared to step into it. And we're going to show this. Because the light, the light, man, is deep. It does so many, it has so many benefits for you and I in Christ. But people on the outside are sometimes scared to walk in. And there's a reason why. We'll get to that, of course. Now, but you know what? Let's get to John 8. Let's get to this part where he says, I'm the light of the world. Because there's a hidden mystery there. Hidden there. I mean, absolutely hidden gem. And it's so powerful. I mean, it's absolutely powerful. So we're going to start from the beginning. Well, at least verse 2 in chapter 8. He says, early in the morning, so this is a new day, Jesus came back into the temple court. Temple court. Remember that? That's, that's huge. That temple court. And the people came to him in crowds. And he sat down and was teaching them. So he had a crowd of people and he was teaching them. Who knows what he's teaching about? We don't know. Probably doesn't matter for you and I, because we have the Holy Spirit. He's teaching us anything, so it's not big deal. When the scribes of the Pharisees brought a woman who had been caught in adultery, they made her stand in the middle of the court and put the case before him. Do you ever notice that one thing about the Pharisees? They put their own effort in the center of everything they do. Notice they stuck a woman in, in the midst, in the center. Last time I checked, the guy said, this light is Jesus. And, G, and he said, light be the center. Not man, but Jesus. And now man's trying to put man in the center. The light shines brighter than that. Teacher. So they didn't know who he was, a rabbi in, the, in, the, in Hebrew. Rabbi. Notice that the people who are prideful call him teacher. But the humble who realized who he is called him Lord. So they didn't have a name. Because even Judas called him rabbi. But the rest of the disciples called him Lord. So he already knew he was going to betray him. Be ready to gospel. So he didn't get to the end. Spoiler. Sorry. But notice that. <laughs> this woman has been calling the very act of adultery. Okay. Cool. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such women offenders shall be stoned to death. Now, that's true, but there's part two they left out. The man has to be stoned to death, too. The man and woman gets brought forward, put in the sun, and they get stones, and they stone them. Where's the guy at? They broke their own law. And I can tell you, they, they broke their own law. The people who tried to, what, keep the laws, and made it look like they were keeping the law, just broke their own law. How funny. How funny. And we think that we could keep Ten Commandments. They couldn't keep this one. Couldn't keep one. Break one, you break them all. Done deal. Shattered. Like a house of cards. <laughs> Done. But what do you say do, to do with her? What is your sentence? And they did this, they, tr they said, to try to test them. Hoping that they might find a charge on what to accuse them. So it wasn't even about the woman. It was about trying to just stomp Jesus. But Jesus stooped down and worked on the ground with his finger. His finger. And if you don't know why he stooped down and worked on the ground, it's because he was in the temple courts. And the temple court ground was made of stone. Stone blocks put in the rubbers. Kind of looked like Monument Avenue. Uh -huh. But with the stones. So he wrote down on stone with his finger. Who is that picture of? Guy on Mount Sinai writing the Ten Commandments. You come out with the law. I'm the writer of the law. Now check this out. So he does it. And they persisted with the question. They wanted to get him, but he's sitting there showing them. Know how it says that he came and the world did not recognize him? He is showing them who he is. Man, John has some good details on him. Things and details. He says, I'm God. Don't you see? That's right. He raised himself up and said, let him who is our sin among you be the first to throw a stone at her. All right. Then he bent down again and kept on writing. Oh, you know what? He just said, I'm God again. Because God wrote the commandments twice. 
because they first were broken by Mo Moses the first time when he came down, and Moses had to go back up the mountain, and, he, and God had to write him again. He just showed them his God. He said the miracles and signs, here it is. Did not choose, we read earlier this morning that in chapter 6 that they were asking for miracles and signs, and here it is, right here. God himself saying, I'm God, I'm God, I'm God. They listened to him, and they began going out, conscience stricken. Ooh, conscience is a, that's a terrible thing, isn't it? One by one, from the oldest down to the last one, until Jesus was left alone. Now, I want you to pick, recognize this. He was left alone in the woman. So now, he was teaching there, right? And the crowd was there. And then the Pharisees came with this woman. Now, they all left. Even the crowd left. Even then, and when it was only just Jesus and her. That was it. This is a very, very important to realize this. Yeah, he's a sinner. But realize that the crowd who was there listening for this teaching left too. They were conscious stricken too. Notice that. They walked out. And of course he says, when Jesus raised himself, uh, when Jesus raised himself up, we don't raise up Jesus. I don't care how much you try to preach and try to say, I'm going to raise up Jesus for everybody to see. He raises himself up. Only he can do it. And he said to her, woman, where are your accusers? Accusers. Whew. Has no man condemn you? She answered, no one, Lord. And, she, and Jesus said to her, I do not condemn you either. Go on your way. From now on, sin no more. And actually, the word sin here is referring to the sin she committed. Adultery. I don't condemn you for adultery. Now you can stay out free from adultery. Because they all were, which is interesting if you go back to when he accused them, he says, he used that, this sin in the Greek, adultery. They all left out. The whole crowd left. Why? Because they must have left in their minds, too. Now when he brought the law back up, if you just lust with your mind, you commit adultery. They all left out, too. The whole crowd committed adultery. All right, now, 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 it was just Jesus and the woman in the temple court, right? You saw that, right? I understand that. Once more, Jesus addressed the crowd. It means he moved. He's no longer in the temple court. This is very, very important to understand this. He moved. They left out the temple court and went somewhere. But Jesus, he didn't know kind of does this. He come, people leave out, he kind of follows them. He's got something over the in this one. So he moves places. He said, I am the light of the world. He who follows me will not be walking in the dark, but will have the light which is, is life. Now, I, I, I know exactly where he was at. You want to know how I know? It's a statement that he made, I'm the light of the world. There's something that the, Jew, the Jews in their culture call the light of the world. There's, a, there's an item. And it's placed specifically somewhere inside the temple. And this tells you exactly where he was at. He was talking to Menorah. They called the Menorah the light of the world. And he says, I'm the light of the world. You just look at this. But I'm the light. I'm the, I'm the manifestation of that. And this gets deeper. Because I want you to see something. Notice that in the lampstand, it's called lampstand too, menorah. There's a center part. And it's bigger flame than all the rest. Also notice how each flame points to it. The center. This is very important. So I, I want you to look at how it's made. Because if you see how it's made, you understand why Jesus said, I'm the light of the world. I'm the light of the world. Exodus 25. You shall make a lampstand of pure gold. Pure gold. Pure gold. No, nothing else but gold. And guess what? Gold speaks of what? God's righteousness. His righteousness. Not ours. His. Pure gold. Of beaten and turn work shall the lampstand be made. So it means they beat it. What does that sound like? 
Jesus is getting beat on the cross, taking our sins and taking the whips, getting beaten. His righteousness was getting beaten so that what? We could be made righteous, right? Both its base and its shaft. Now, I want you to notice that. That it's saying the base, the base and its shaft is the only part that's beaten. I want you to really pay attention to that portion of it. Because this part is the only part it speaks of that is beaten. The cinder. It is two cups, its knobs, its flowers shall be one piece with it. Six branches shall come out of the side of it. Oh boy, you ready for this? It comes out of the side. You want to look back? I'm the vine and you're the branches. You come forth. The church came forth out of his side. And what do we do? We point to him. The lampstand. Branches come out of his side. Three branches of the lampstand out of one side and three branches out of the other side. Man, that speaks volumes there, too. Three cups made like almond blossoms. Now, there's also another part in the Bible, before the, or after this, that we find out there's something else made of almond, an uh, almond branch. That almond branch is who? Aaron. His rod was made out of almond wood, right? Now, the, the sons of Kohath, or Korah, Kor had beef with him being be pointed as high priest, right? They said, you don't represent us. You need to pick one of us, the high priest. And so the, God said, you put all your staffs together, and whoever blooms shall be high priest. So they put their staffs together overnight. They put that Aaron's rod is the only one that budded. It was made of almond branch. Now, there's a reason why, this, why he has almond. An uh, almond is the one, first one to produce flowers and fruit. First fruit. Jesus is the first fruit. Our high priest is our first, first fruit. Each would knob and a flower on each branch. A flower speaks of beauty. Speaking of the essence of Jesus. And three cups made like almond blossoms on the other, on the other branch with a knob and a flower. So for the six branches coming out of the lampstand, notice that it's a direct re resemblance of the shaft. The church looks just like Jesus. And the light shows up. They were in the holy place. That's where the lampstand was at. And of the center side it shall itself you shall make four cups like almond blossoms with their knobs and their flowers. And also make a knob on the shaft on the, each pair of the six branches going out of the lampstand in one piece with it. Their knobs and their branches shall be one, be of one piece with it. Man, in Christ, we're one with God. We're actually one with God. The whole of it, one beaten work of pure gold. One beaten finished work of Jesus. And you shall make the lamps of the lampstand to include a seventh one. And at the top of the shaft. And the priest shall set up the seven lamps so, of it so they may give light in front of it. This is why they call it the light of the world. Because it gave light to the holy place. And they consider it only a small fraction of what the holies of holies had. Because the so when Jesus stepped in there, he says, I'm the light of the world. Now, if you know a little something, these candles here are lit by this one. This is the one that burns continually, and these get put out. The high priest takes the light from this and lights them up. Now, if you also look at it, the flowers, there's five flowers on the shaft. And each one has, these have three. We have, in us, we have the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit in us. And he's full of grace, and we come out of his side that we look just like him as he is, so are we in this world. That he's being the light of the world. Now, there's something that's actually interesting, too. These cups will turn. If you look at the high priest's duties, God said, at 3 o'clock in the morning, high priest, you're going to go in because these cups 
would turn on phase. And they would stop pointing to the middle. And the high priest child would come in, and he, at 3 o'clock in the morning, from 3 to 6 a.m., he would turn the lights to face him, face the center. Now, I want to tell you something. At 3 a.m. In, mor- in the morning, on one night, Jesus, the disciples were rowing across the river at their darkest moments. They couldn't get across the river, caught in the storm, and here comes Jesus walking on water. In your darkest moments, God points you back to him. You can rest in that because he's the light of the world. He's going he's to point you back to him. Your high priest is going to come in and redirect you so that your light now points back to him. That you see his light and not somewhere else. He'll point you right back. Always. Because that was their duty. They had to do it every night from 3 to 6 a.m. They even cut the wick. It starts to burn. They cut the, the black part off so you didn't smoke. So you don't produce bad fruits. It, it's true. It's, it's amazing how he put that. Now, knowing this, Check this out. First, first those the, the Thessalonians. Goodness, Thessalonians five. It says in chapter and verse four. But you are not given up to the power of darkness, brother, for that day to overtake you, you by as it can be. For you are all sons of the light, of light, and sons of the day. And we do not belong either to the night or darkness. And I say, God. Why do you call it day? Why did you put day here? Why did you even put darkness, night? He says something. Come with me. Let's go back to Genesis. And God said, let there be light. Or light be. And God saw that light was good, and he proved it. And God separated light from darkness. And God called the light day. Called it day. And he called darkness, he called night. He'd be like, well, you know, he's, he's, he's putting the sun and the moon. No, go back down. Keep reading. Then he separates. He makes the moon, and he makes the sun. No, he put us in light. He put the people who reject Jesus in the dark. When he says, before I create anything, I chose you and put you in the beloved. He wasn't kidding, because it's written right there. He put you in the light. You're in the light. He put you in the day. He's coming for you. He knew you were accepting. He said, I got you. I already appropriate. I already put you in the right position. You're coming, baby. You're day. You're not called dark. You're not called night. There's nothing that's hidden from you. Because in the day, you can always see where you're going. But at night, you can't see where you're going. You're running through the trees. You're running through stuff. You try to drive a car at night with no lights on and see how far you get. You'd be hitting stuff, right? So you know what you know, that means? That we know everything. And God hides nothing from us. Doesn't. It's all visible in all four of us. He wants us to know it all. All. Now, if your mind gets dark, he comes and twists your light around. All right? Now, keep going. Colossians 1. Given thanks to God who has qualified and made us fit to share the portion which is the inheritance of the saints in the light. God wants you to see your inheritance. He wants you to see it. Jesus shines so bright so that you can see that all he's done for you. So that you know that you have every single promise that God has ever made is yours. And God says yes to it. He says take. Take. Take, child. Take. Whatever you need, take. It's all yours. Now, this is just one benefit of it. The Father has delivered us and drawn us to himself. Doesn't the high priest turn those lights back to himself? That's him drawing us to himself. Out of the control and dominion of the darkness. And has transferred us into the kingdom of the Son of his love. In whom we have our redemption through his blood, which the forgiveness, which means the forgiveness of our sins. But notice there's inheritance. Now there's also another one. There's another benefit of this. Actually, there's two more. Of being in the light that he is your what? The light of the world. You want to know the second one? Pertains to, guess what? How many times y'all fall? How many times you sin during the day? In the daytime. With your mind or with your actions. Probably a lot, right? Stuff comes up. Somebody makes you mad. You're like, oh, I hate you. 
Oh man, you work my nerve, you're in traffic, man. Who just beep, you know, like come on now. That's sin, is it not? Being hateful to your people, to your brothers and sisters, right? You see a pretty girl, pretty guy? I said pretty guy, okay. But in your mind goes goes the wrong way, right? You feel like, yeah, I'm gonna keep my money to myself, and I'm not gonna walk in and not give. You know, and God's saying, give, give, but you're not walking in what faith. This is what our faith is a sin, right? God made it very plain, clear, right? So we're not walking in there. But you know what the benefit of being in the light is? That He is our light of the world. First John one five seven. We talked about this last week, and John's talking to unbelievers, agnostics who who infiltrate the church, and boy, did he want to get them saved. He wanted to have fellowship with them because he probably knew most of them from his days before he got saved, right? He says in verse 5, In this message, the message of promise, which we have heard from him, and now report it to you, God is light. You know what? There's only two descriptions in the whole New Testament of what God is. God is love, and God is light. And there is no darkness in him at all. If you're in his shadow, it's still not dark. He says, If I under the shadow of my wings, Almighty, right? Psalm 91, there's not any darkness there. It proves the point in the holies. The holies, there was no light, yet there was, it was the brightest place in the whole temple. God's presence brings the light. God is light. So if we say we're partakers and enjoy fellowship with him, and we live and move and walk in about in darkness, we are both speaking falsely and do not live and practice the truth, right? We already know that if we're in Christ, we're already we're sons of the light of the day, right? So that isn't talking about us, it's talking about somebody who's not, right? Some of you might say, oh yeah, I have a relationship with God, yet they're not. They don't, right? We see that so much. You ask somebody, hey man, you got a relationship with God? They're like, yeah, I got it. It's mom. Muhammad. I'm like, no you don't. You're in darkness, right? It's a lot. But, now let's check it out. Check out the benefit of being in the light. But if we are really living and walking in the light, or it means that you're in the light, period, the amplifier decides to try to break out, but it makes, it makes it sound like works. But it means that you're in the light if you're in Christ. If we're truly in Christ, then we're in the light, as he himself is in the light. We have true, unbroken fellowship. So guess what? It gives you true, unbroken fellowship. There's nothing between you and God. And you guess what? With the light, you can see that. Oh, there's, no, there's nothing between me and God. I'm going to run with boldness to God. Why? With one another. And the blood of Jesus Son cleanses us from all sin and guilt. Keeps us cleansed from sin in all its forms and manifestation. It keeps you clean. And just this blood just doesn't wash you away at the time you get saved. It continues. This word cleanse means continually, always happening, always active, making you clean. So in the light, we see this. We see there's nothing separated between me and God. And guess what Jesus was telling him? I'm the light. Come. Come home. I'm going to show you. You have untru true, unbroken fellowship with God in me. In me. You'll never have to worry about somebody trying to say, you know what? You sin, you sin away your inheritance from God. No, he says, if you're in the light, you see that it's still there. you always see it's there. And what does the devil try to do? Bring darkness. He tries to cloud up your mind. Try to see that you don't see it anymore. It puts the effort back on yourself. Instead of just walking in grace, in which grace always points to the light. It says, no, it's all here. It's all here. It's all right here. So you're all good, my friend, my son. You're good. You're absolutely good. You're clean. I know you, I know, I know. You fell. You know what? But look how clean you are. Look how Jesus has made you clean. As he is, so are you right now in this world. What do you think that does to somebody? When they see that light and they see themselves flawless, still spotless, you think some people are like, well, it will go out and make them just go buck wild. Actually, the opposite happened. You know, I sat there and watched y'all on Friday being in the light and going out and doing what? Testifying of the light. So the, it doesn't make you go out and sin. Actually, it makes you, what, know that you're clean. Makes you go to God with boldness. 
Not just go up to him like this, we hit hell down. No, you walk to him boldly. Hey, guy, I'm here. I screwed up. Yep, I screwed up. But it says I'm clean. Daddy, thank you for loving me. Thank you for your love. Yeah, I don't deserve it. You know what? Let me go, let me go pick up somebody. Somebody just walked out of the abortion clinic. You know what? God's not mad at you. God loves you. What do you think that's doing? You start testifying now. You start picking the other people when they fall. You're like, come on. Come stay in the light with me. I want to show you who you really are. And people think that when you get in the light, it's true. Religion in China says, when you get in the light, man, your works are going to be exposed, man. It, it's scary to be in the light. It's not what God says. God says something different. For one, if it cleanses you, it cleanses you from your what? Dead works. Your works of the flesh, right? So there's not there. But I have another scripture that says it. This is what religion does. It makes people so scared to come to God. Puts clouds, because even Jesus said it too. We 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 kind of rat we kind of um, pounced on Mr. Nicodemus earlier, but Jesus said something pretty cool to him. And you know what? We need to see that because it shows something about our lives. Since we go to verse verse sixteen, because you know I always want to start with an awesome scripture, so you know grab people's attention. So God is so great to love the world, so greatly love and dearly prize the world. That he even gave his own begotten son, that whoever believes in him shall not perish, but have eternal life. Again, he, just like we said earlier, he asked the only thing you should do. They asked, what should we do to work the guys? He said, just believe in him. So what does God still say here? Still believes. Just believe in Jesus. It, your works ain't going to get you saved. Because he's salvation. You have to believe in him. For God did not send the son into the world to judge the world, but that the world might find salvation and be made safe and sound through him. For he who believes in him, clings to him, trusts on him, is not judged. He who trusts in him never comes up for judgment. For there is no rejection, no condemnation, and he curses no damnation. Guess what? You realize that when you're in the light, don't you? You sure do, don't you? It's in the, it's the time when your mind's been clouded with darkness that you think God is what? Condemning you. And this light comes in and shines in and shines the darkness away the devil tries to put in your mind, Right? God wants to illuminate your mind. Because he's already illuminated who you are, your spirit. But he wants to illuminate your mind. This number says in Ephesians, it says, enlighten, illuminate, revelation. Revelation to a Jewish person said it's light. It's light. This revelation is the light. They call it the light. He wants to get you here and bring light here to really know that you're in the light and that you're clean. And you know what? You look just like Jesus to God. But he who does not believe is already judged, that he's already been convicted and has already received the sentence because he has not believed and trusted in the name of the only begotten Son of God. He is condemned for refusing to let his trust rest in Christ's name. The basis of the judgment lies in this. The light has come into the world. Jesus, he's talking about himself. I'm here, Nicodemus. Nicodemus didn't, sure didn't see at this time. We know that he got it later. When he died on the cross. You can see, actually, if you, you pick up the three times he's actually mentioned in the Bible, in this gospel, John's gospel, second time he's mentioned, he's like, man, maybe he's not a bad person after all. In midst of all the Pharisees. He's not so bad after all, is he? And they kind of like, ooh, who are you? You're Nicodemus. Why are you talking like that? And the third time he's mentioned, he's like, he's getting the body down from Jesus' body off the cross and anointing it. He knew it at the right time because the women came back three days later and he wasn't there. It's funny. The, his mind got in revelation. The light came. And this, the light has come into the world and the people who have loved the darkness then and more than the light for their work deeds were evil. Now, so many people say, well, this is just sin. This means them keeping the thoughts, you read their line, they're just breaking the law of Moses, you know, they're just doing this. And, watch this. For every wrongdoer hates the light. Again, evil deeds. It will not come out into the light, but shrinks from it, lest his works be exposed and repotted, right? And we're like, oh, they sin. He, you know, they, they sin. You know, you don't want to go in there. You can't go into the light of Jesus. You know, with sin. You know, 
You know, you just can't do it. It's going to be exposed. You know, the prophet's going to come out there and expose your sin to the rest of the congregation, right? That's not what he's talking about. But he who practices truth, what does what is right, comes out into the light. So that his works may be plainly shown to be what they are. What are these works? We're like, well, that just means you're praying, you know, you give it to the poor, you're tithing every time you get money, and you're doing the good works. No, listen to what it says. Walk with God, divinely prompted, done with God's help and independence, and independence upon Him. What does it show? God's grace working in your life? Keep it simple. It's God's grace working in your life. You know why people are shrink back from wanting to walk in the light and see the light? Because their own self-effort never measures up. And they're scared to show they never measure up. But somebody says, you know what? I'll take the grace. It gets shown promptly to everybody to see. You know what's so funny is that you see people in prominent positions, especially in the church, who are so working themselves, in a sense, making their own self works. And you see them do what? Fall. And you, you never hear from them again, now do you? But you hear the same people who are preaching grace, and they fall, but they still rise up. And it's always what's shining through, grace. It's God working. It's the Holy Spirit working in them to accomplish everything. It's everything, all these works were prompted by, this, by God himself and done with God's help. It's God's grace working. And it's for everybody to see. So what does that make you and I? A light. It makes us light. Right? Now, I thought it was interesting. Jesus said, you don't put a candle under the bed. You don't put it in the closet. You put it plainly out for every way to what? See. So what's, what is he talking about? Of course not. You don't, put, you don't put a candle under the bed. You're going to burn the whole bed up for one. Sitting in the closet, what's the point of that? Because, you know, nobody gets to see it. Nobody gets to see underneath the bed until the whole bed's lit on fire, right? <laughs> what he's saying is that he puts the church out front to shine brightly. He wants the people to see what? His grace working through the church. That they can see who? Jesus. You know what's funny is when they look at us, they don't see us. They see him. They see God talking to them. They see God working. They're like, oh my gosh, there's a God. Holy cow, man. I've been, I've been, oh, whoa. That's Jesus, man. That's Jesus. It's funny looking at Menorah that we just point to him. Light that points to the bigger light. Kind of sounds like the, the beggar pointing the light beggar to where bread's at. We're just not a light shining to those who are in darkness to the light. That's the church. So who's really now the light of the world? Church. God's biggest plan, his hidden mystery from the beginning. When he said the light, the day, it was church. And the devil didn't even see it. All he heard was, Thou shalt not eat from the, the tree of the tree of knowledge of good and evil. He didn't see God build the church. Right there, there, right in front of him. God <clears throat> built the church right in front of him. In front of our eyes, because how many times did we read Genesis 3 and they didn't see that? Or Genesis 1, we didn't see that. We thought we were making the sun and the moon. You know, we're like, oh, cool, that's cool. No, he built the church before he built anything on it. <coughs> he built the church before he built anything. Who's this most prized possession? Church. It's the church. It always has been and always will be. It blows my mind that he said, light be, and he built the church. That means me. That means you. Before he did anything, he built you. That light of the world built you and made you a light. Even though you were going to fall, flout your face, get dirty and beyond your own self can ever clean, he made you the church. Knowing all that, all of that, he still made you the church. 
close my mind away. Because when I got slain, I saw that. When God put me into the spirit, I saw him building the church. Yeah, we see him, oh, he's building the earth, he's creating the animals, creating the seas, he's creating this, he's creating that. No, he's building the church first. He built the church, the day, the light. And when Jesus says, I'm the light of the world, this is where you need to be. Right here. I'm the light. They just had this commotion about sin and woman in the middle. He says, no, I'm the light world. I'm the center of everything. And what I said there is a light. Grace and no condemnation. You know what? You won't go back to center. I'm the light. You were created in me and through me. Because you know what? If I got upset with them, I don't know, just me, that twice he showed that he was God. And they rejected. It's about the light of the world. I created you. You came out through me. You don't have existence because you don't have existence without me. We were singing that song this morning. Sing the song before this. We said, Jesus is the sinner. Do we actually really truly believe that? Do we truly believe that he's the center of everything? Do we truly believe that he's the center of the church? Everything God says it, he is, but do we believe it? He says, I'm the sinner. You can't do anything without me. You can't go here, you can't go there without me. How, how, can, you, how can your path ever be lit if, if I'm not the sinner? How do you know where you're going without me? We try to be on our own light, don't we? Oh, I got to do this. Oh, I got to do this. Promptly it says, here is God works through us. We have no problem being in the light. Because we don't mind our light being shined. We don't mind giving where credit is due. Now do we? Nope, Jesus. Yeah. We don't take credit for ourselves. I was like, oh, no, man, I, 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 I was so smart. I got it. No, it was, it, it was Jesus who did it. He's the light that illuminates through me. Now, we see this here. And remember how back here, since people shrink away from darkness, from the light, because of their self-works, right? You want to see this in action? The Bible actually, John actually records it in action. John 18. It's Jesus in the garden. Jewish just did his due, got his coins, filled up his pockets full of some, some silver. Says, ah, let's go get Jesus. Let's go arrest Jesus. They come again. Then Jesus, knowing that all was about to befall him, went out to them, the soldiers. Whom are you seeking? Finally, they, they didn't get to say anything to him. He, he, this is it. God is proactive. Again, he speaks before they speak. They answer him, Jesus the Nazarene. Usually they say Jesus of Nazareth, but they said Nazarene. They just define him as just only man. Jesus said to him, I am. I love this part. Judas, who was betraying him, was standing there with him. It's like Judas was trying to force Jesus' hand to say, he's come back to save us, right? Like he forced the hand. He was trying to make him come out and say, I'm your king. Right? It's like he's, he's trying to get Jesus. He is trying to move God himself. And these soldiers are too. They're trying to do their works. When Jesus said to them, I am, they went backwards. And drew back, lurched backwards, and fell to the ground. They fell to the ground. Mel Gibson, I hope you're watching this. You didn't do the passion of Christ justice. Because he even said, I am he, and his. And they didn't move. They stood there, they're tortured. Okay, yeah, Jesus, come on. No, they hit the ground. You know what's funny about our king? About our king? He still stood there. He stood there. He gave himself up. No one took his life. But I want you to know something else. Then again he asked them, Whom are you seeking? 
And they said, Jesus the Nazarene. Woo, they're about to get something again. Jesus said, I told you that I am. If you want me, it is I, only I for whom you are seeking. Let these men go their way. You know what it says in the Greek? They fell backwards. Again. They fell down like, again. They couldn't even stand in the presence of God's name. Mm. They fell down. Their self-works put them flat on the ground. Your self-works can never stand before God. It's only by grace you stand before God. He said, I am. I said, God, why'd you do this twice? He said, God doesn't just do stuff for anything, right? He just doesn't. So, so God, why did you say I am twice to him? He says, well, they reject me my first coming. So that's okay. So the second Thessalonians. For the mystery of lawlessness is already at work in the world, but is restrained only until he who restrains, restrains is taken out of the way. And, to, and then the lawless one will be revealed in the Lord Jesus, will slay him with the breath of his mouth and bring to, to an end his appearance of his coming. And it's talking about light. It's the appearance of the light that the devil is destroyed. They rejected him on his second coming, too. The unbelievers. So they fell on twice. You know how Philippians 2 says, every knee shall bow, every mouth shall confess to Jesus? You know what? When you said, Jesus saved me, you just confess with your mouth that he is Lord and you bow your knee to him. The bow the knee means humble. You humble yourself. You say, I can't do it, God. I need you. And we see how he is, how everybody else is unbelievers. They fall flat down on the ground. You know, it's funny, when you keep reading about the end, the day of judgment, which is really a day of reward for you and I, we're standing with Jesus. Everybody else is on their knees. Because we already bowed our knee. We're in Christ. That's who we are. We're children of the day. The church. Knows that your self works will never stand up to God. You can never stand up in God's presence. It's only grace that does. It's only Him. Him working through you. Him prompting you and Him working through you that stands before you. So we have a reveal. It, it shows us what? The light, this light, this light of the world shows us our inheritance. It shows us that there's nothing separating from you and the eye from God. And it shows there is God who's working in us to everybody else. So what did the church become? Hope. To the world. As the world gets darker, the light gets brighter. I can light a light right here. It doesn't seem bright. But as these lights start to dim down, it gets brighter and brighter and brighter. So I say, world, get darker. Go ahead and get darker. You see all the flip on news? It gets darker, don't it? Each day seems to get worse and worse. Well, guess what, church? It's time to what? Shine brighter and brighter and brighter, and know that you have the light of the world inside of you. Now, it's funny because even Gideon said that they had candles inside clay pots, and when they went before the enemy, they broke the clay pots, and the light shined, and the enemy was destroyed. They killed themselves. Clay pots speak of humanity. And I mentioned this earlier this morning. That woman who dropped her pot, the Samaritan woman at the well, they were clay pots in the, in the Greek. She dropped her self-effort preach the gospel. But Gideon smashed, they smashed the clay pots and the light shined out and the world was, and the enemy was destroyed. Sounds like Jesus, don't it? It's true to reveal who he is. His coming. His appearance. His coming. And they praised God as they were coming out of Gideon. Speaks of this day. Speaks of this day. But we're the light. We are the light, because even Jesus said, Revelation 2, 1. So to the angel of the seven of church in Ephesus, these are the words of him who holds the seven stars, which are the messengers of the seven church, in his right hand, who goes back to the seven golden lampstands, which are the churches. 
we the lampstand. We the light. And he goes about. What does he do? Always directing us back to him. He's taking it, pointing it back to him. In our darkest moments as a church, he makes sure that our lights are pointed to him. So that when the world looks at us, they're seeing him. Jesus, the light, the bigger light. This is why I want to get us menorah. Because it points to Jesus. Every aspect of it, the menorah points to Jesus. His finished work. Here. And that just shows who and I, you and I who we are now today in Christ. Through that finished work. But he goes about this point. Oh, oh, it starts to burn a little bit. We can't have black smoke. Black smoke is kind of irritating, right? You know what? Can it start the black smoke? You always trim the top wick before you light it, right? And therefore it produces a nice clean light. He trips it back. He's like, you know what? I'm a, I need to help you out. I need to get and help renew your mind. Snip. Gone. Lights it up. Good to go. You're good to go. Now your light shines bright. Now he's looking at the black smoke. They're looking at the nice, beautiful light that's illuminated within you that's pointing to Jesus Christ. That's our God. The light of the world. And from the beginning, he was a sinner. And then we look at Revelation. He's the end. He's the beginning. He's the end. He's the Allah. He's the top. He's the Omega. He's, he's the Alpha and the Omega. That's who our God is. He was there from the beginning. I, I, I'm still I still blows my mind that that moment he created the church right then and there. You see it. Light is good. Light is good. Call it day. Call it church. And that's what God has chosen to invest himself in. And put him in. Shining. So we, we know what we need to do? Point to our Jesus. When we start to focus in on him, we become that, that light. Start renewing our mind and seeing him as the light that has everything that we ever wanted that's before us. It's all there. Why do I need to go anywhere else? I don't need to go to Baal, you know, these false gods. I don't need to go to the bank and keep asking for loans and stuff. My God supplies. Because it wasn't the promise that Abraham says, you should not be baller, borrowers, but you be lenders. Hmm. Had me thinking. That's us. That's the church. Why are, we, why are we depending on somebody else to bring in our supply when it's God himself who's our supply? He gave us Jesus. Why would he give us everything else? He is our supply. He is our light that shows us that. He illuminates everything for us. We see clear. Before we walk out, we know where we're going. We see what's before us. You don't, if you don't see it, you say, God, I need light to shine right here. You lie the world. Light up. Light up. Now, we're not talking about smoking him, but we're talking about light up. Look ahead. You can see your steps. We don't walk blindly. As so many people say, we walk so blindly in life. No, we don't. Because Jesus said, that Paul said to the Thessalonian church, you sh that, oh, that day when Jesus comes and wraps the church up, shall not overtake you. You want to know why? Because God lights the way for you. You know when Jesus is coming back to get you. You know it. We know it as a church. Yeah, we're like, oh, well, look, Matthew. He says, no, no one knows, not even the Son knows, just the Father. Well, if we're one with God and the Holy Spirit dwells in us, he tells us. He lights our way. He's the light of the world. And you know what? We know when Jesus is coming back to get the church. We know. It's right here. We have it right here inside of us. And God lights it. He says, okay. All right, we got to get as many people saved, God. All right, let's go. Let's go. The day's coming. The day is coming. Yep, yep, the day is coming. Let's go. Let's go. Let's go, church. Let's go. God, let's go. I know you want to see everybody repent. You want everybody to be in Christ. Let's go. You know what? You see, you're like, oh, my gosh, financially, man, there's a little, there's a little ding right here. God goes, like, there it is. Come on. Let's go. Let's go over here. It's not the blind leading the blind. It's the light that leads us. We're not, we're not blind. We are God. Why do we hide stuff from us? That's what I never get. Why do we hide things from us? He said he wants to give us everything. 
He wants us to have everything in life. It's called heaven on earth. He, Jesus didn't say, oh, I give you life, but I'm going to hide some stuff away from you so you can try to see if you can find abundant life. No, he said, I come to give you life and life more abundantly. So God says, it's all yours. I want you to have it. I love you. You're my son, my daughter. I'm your father. Just like my kids, man. The girls, I give them anything. They need it, they're going to get it. They want it, they're pretty much going to get it. I'm, I'm, I'm an earthly father, but you know what? They're going to get it. My little girl, man, she looks at me. I'm like, oh, let's go to the pantry. I know you want. Come on, let's get some Oreos. You know, it is what it is. But see, that's a father to a child. The same thing with our God. God goes, you really do care about that. So you know what? As your father, I care about that. Light on. Come over here. Come on. I'm not leading you blindly. The light's before you. I'm telling you where to go. I'm telling you what's around the next corner. I'm telling you where this is at. I know where this is going to go. I'm going to tell you to go here. I'm going to tell you to go here. Oh, yeah, I'm going to be in you. Just go. I'm going to lie of the world. I am the light of the world. Everything else that came before you was darkness. But I'm the light. And I'm the true light. And you don't have creation. You don't have being if it wasn't without me. You came through me. Without me, there is no life. Without me, there is nothing. I am the light of the world. He makes it very plain, man. He puts it hard. I know it seems so, man. And you know what's funny about that chapter, chapter 8? It ends with Jesus in the mess. The light always puts Jesus back in the center. Grace always puts Jesus at the center knows that it was man's work at the beginning and man was at the middle. But at the end, it was grace that had Jesus back in the center. You know what? You know what? I'm sorry. Grace ain't gonna make some, it's gonna make some enemies. Let's be real. When Paul preached to cities and towns and stuff, one side of the town will say, yay for the gospel. And our people were like, death to Paul. You want to split a crowd, preach grace. If you want everybody to be your buddy, just go ahead and keep preaching works. They'll love you. They'll love you. But you want to step out, preach grace. You divide the whole room. People who are ready, they stop, they're done with the works, they're, they're tired, they're going to be saying, yes, yes. People who says, we talk, this is blasphemy. Because they're still trying to work. And still, they haven't came to the end of themselves. They're going to say, I'll come against you. So be it. You said, so be it. I'm the light of the world. You can't touch me. Your, your works can't step in my presence. Because I'm God. You can't come before me unless I draw you. And the light draws you. My wife, when I first met her, on our first date. Whew. My whole life got lit up. And I saw Jesus. And I saw Jesus through her. Because I was getting ready to kill myself. I was getting ready to kill myself because I was tired. I was tired of working and I just knew I was just going to go to house. And I said, why not? And I saw Jesus and my life lit up. He drew me in with his light. I got saved two weeks later. This is what God does. He says, I'm the light. I'm the light of the world. Church, go to dark. It's okay. Your way is led anyways. You're going to draw all people to you because I drew all judgment on me on the cross. People will come to you. The place gets darker. They don't know where to turn. In darkness, you don't have no idea where you're going, do you? How many of y'all try to walk in your room when it's dark? I try to be masters of that, man. I try to be good. I put my hand on my eye, turn the light off, let my eyes cook and get adjusted. I'm like, oh, yeah, look at me. And then all of a sudden, it'd be that one little thing. And you hit your toe, and you're on the floor crying. Or you step on a Lego, <laughs> and it feels like spikes just driven through your feet, right? But you couldn't see that because it was dark. Jesus is a switch. 
You see so clearly, can't speak. It's nothing. And somebody comes to try to preach you something different than the gospel, you're like, no, nah, that's not true. It's not true, God. Then somebody preaches the truth, you're like, that's truth. Because you can see it clearly. The Holy Spirit saying, it's truth. It's in you. Shine the light. Woo, it's good. You're good to go. You're good. But church, wherever we go, the light is with us. And he ain't got to scare about darkness. It says the darkness has never overcome it. Has never, 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 who may? It never will. Because my Bible says that Jesus defeats the devil with the coming of his light. This darkness never wins. It just means when it gets darker, the church gets brighter. What does that mean? Jesus coming back. I don't know about you. That's what I look forward to. You know, it's funny about that. So many people talk about the judgment. They preach that judgment too. It sounds kind of scary for us Christians, right? Sometimes, right? But when you know that you're in, in the light, you actually know the truth about judgment day, don't you? See at his right hand, have that he places a crown on your head. Why in the word of God do you place a crown on my head when I'm the one who turned my back against you? And you had to save me. Yet you're putting a crown on my head? That's why John says they record as them tossing the crowns at his feet. But we realize what it was. Because the light's there. We see it was in us. It was God working in us. Through us. For us. It's him. It's the light. The light of the world. 